This program is brought to you by Cable Franchise Vs and generous donations from viewers like you. Good evening and welcome back to Byline. This is a public affairs show uh, produced right here at Amherst Media and it's with the programming assistance of the Amherst League of Women Voters which helped us launch this show last year and it's our purpose to help you understand the transition that's going on between our old form of town government and our new form of town government and uh, we bring in guests who are uh, doing work in the government or with the government and so today's uh, guest is going to be our chair of the CPA Community Preservation Act Committee Nate Buddington and Nate you've been in town for how long? Just about 10 years. 10 years and what brought you here? Well we um, my wife and I had moved to Western Massachusetts from suburban Los Angeles in 2000 she got a job at Williams College. We lived in Williamstown for about nine years and um, and my wife got a job at Amherst College, so we moved to Amherst in about '09, I believe. Great. Um, I had lived here very briefly in the '80s for one year. Oh. Um, what were you doing then? I was bartending at Delano's. Um, <laughs> great. It's a you long came, story. I don't you came the details, all the way here to bartender. I, and then one of bartender the great disappointments of moving back to Amherst <laughs> was first thing I did is I went to Delanovers to get a a Delanover, which was the specialty. And it was closed. Oh. I was crushed. <laughs> wow. But Williams to Amherst. Right. So uh, there's a little bit of a rivalry there. Do you feel any tug? I don't. You know, <laughs> I mean, I didn't go to either one. I've worked at both. They're two wonderful institutions. Great. And uh, so, yeah, the rivalry uh, doesn't mean much to me personally. Great. And so you got involved in some stuff here in town that... Uh, yeah, my first taste in Williamstown, I was on the Conservation Commission, and that got me kind of a taste of volunteer work for town government. And when I came here, I got involved in Amherst Baseball, which was the organization that sort of took over the Little League upon Stan Zomek's retirement. Um, and Stan a giant of the community. A giant of the community. At one yeah. point, he pulled me aside and he said, you got to get on the LSSE Commission. So <laughs> I applied and got on the LSSE Commission, and that was really my first taste of volunteer work for, for town government, and Great. it was... Um, it was really rewarding. I really enjoyed it. Great. So you did some conservation work out in Williams, and of course the CPA has an awful lot to do with uh, sure. conservation. Sure. So uh, you sort of gravitated there, but there was some stuff that went on in between that caught your attention in relation to CPA. What was that history? Well, when when the the core of us that had taken over the Amherst baseball youth baseball. Um, one of the things that was pretty clear was that the condition of the fields at Mill River especially uh, was dire. And uh, I wrote a CPA grant for about $127,000 to do a complete refurbishment of both fields. Um, that uh, proposal was accepted by the CPA committee and town meeting. And we did some pretty significant work on those fields. Mm -hmm. So that was really my first exposure to, to So they CPA. gave you 127000 but the project cost more than that. We had to go back after I left that position with Amherst Baseball and then, and then was on CPA as a member. Uh, Amherst Baseball came in with another proposal because they had run short. Mm -hmm. um, and I recused myself from that particular proposal, but they f received another about forty to fifty thousand dollars and now the project is is almost complete so my first exposure to CPA was writing a successful CPA grant mm -hmm. great now I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of CPA read stuff in the newspaper but uh, not everybody knows the background and what this is really all about so right. can you can we sort of do a little bit of history where it came from what its right. purpose is well, you may know more than I do, but but let me I throw did have out the opportunity to vote on it. But you're the guest, right? Okay, um, <laughs> uh, it's an interesting history, really. You know, and I think in the '80s, amidst the kind of economic boom, I think a lot of communities in Massachusetts were seeing um, sort of real threats to maintaining this sense of community that they had had for a long time. The cost of housing, um, historic buildings being under threat from development. Um, and Nantucket, 
uh, at this time had started a kind of a land trust, of uh, kind of a land bank mm -hmm. to preserve land in Nantucket. And if you've ever been in Nantucket, it's that you know that they're under tremendous pressure for development. Sure. Um, so this was kind of an interesting model that I think some other towns looked at. And um, I think there were a couple of iterations of attempts to replicate the Nantucket Land Bank. But eventually, the series of steps, um, the legislature, which you're probably involved in this, um, created the Community Preservation Act, which sort of built this mechanism for towns to fund the kind of things that help to preserve community character. Mm -hmm. The ability for people who grew up in a town to stay in that town as adults. Um, the ability to preserve historic resources, to create uh, a strong recreation infrastructure for children and uh, adults, and to preserve open space that once you lose, you never get it back. Yeah. And so a lot of people think of it only as, and especially at the beginning, to preserve open space. Right. And goodness knows Amherst had plenty of conservation and pres land preservation work going on. Right. In fact, we were one of the leading communities in the Agricultural Preservation Restriction right. Program. This whole region was, and Amherst uh, among it, and, and lots of open space and, and forested lands preserved. Uh, but that's what people focused on. Was, it was all about right. the, the land, but it, in fact, was a much broader concept, right. which you beautifully described, because it's about preserving community, not just preserving space. Exactly. exactly. And so you could take historic structures, historic landscapes, housing, what else? Um, well, the recreation the piece, recreation. which was, okay. I don't think was originally part of CPA, but was added later as right. a subset of the open space yeah. category. Very good. Mm -hmm. And so how does a community get to participate in the program? So there's a couple of ways. Um, uh, we, we have an application process which uh, really begins in the fall. Uh, and we have an online application form which any organization can use to apply for a CPA grant. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the town will utilize this. Um, uh, often from the conservation office will propose open space land uh, preservation projects. Um, Occasionally, the town will be involved with historical preservation projects, but usually it comes from the historic commission or from a private entity. Mm -hmm. um, same with recreation. The baseball project didn't come from the town. It came from Amherst Baseball. Um, and affordable housing, which is probably the most complex part of CPA because it involves mm -hmm. all sorts of different issues that the other categories don't have to consider, um, often come from local nonprofits that are involved in the preservation of housing. So anybody can apply versus this online form. We ask people to submit a budget, to submit a plan for completion. Uh, we do have a bias, I think, toward proposals that come in with a match. Mm -hmm. Some, but you don't have to have a match? No, you don't have to. Okay. No. But we, it's certainly nice but when someone comes nice in and says we've already raised $50,000. But not all of it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be the the completing part of the yeah. project rather than the original part of the, of the grant project. So, <clears throat> so what will happen is um, we will ask the appropriate committee, meaning Historical Commission, LSSE, uh, the Housing Trust, um, or the Conservation Commission to vet each project depending, depending on its on jurisdiction. Depending on the category right. that they're in. Got it. Right. So then we will meet as a committee, we'll have the proposal, we'll have hopefully the endorsement of that appropriate committee. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, originator of the proposal gets to come in and present. Uh, we have an open hearing where individual citizens come in and can speak in favor of a proposal or in opposition to a proposal. Mm -hmm. um, in any given year, we have roughly 800,000 to a million two, at least in the time I've been on the committee, um, to disperse. Mm -hmm. So we do a critical evaluation of these proposals. We accept many, we turn down a few, and and depending on whether we have the money to fund all of them, we try to fund And they can th come back with a revised proposal if they don't succeed the first time around? Sure, you mean come back a subsequent year? In, in the next uh, round. Certainly. Of, of, yeah, Certainly. and there's one round a year? One round of grants a year? Yeah, well, well, that's interesting. You know, when we had town meeting, 
we had to work around town meeting somewhat mm -hmm. limited calendar, so we had one session. Mm -hmm. um, theoretically, we can reconvene if we need right. to because yeah. town council is an ongoing process. We did have this year a, an expedited proposal to, from the town to fund a playground on Kendrick Park. Huh? And there was incredible time pressure because there was a grant that depended on approval of this project by January 1. Okay, and that was a state grant or that a was private a, grant? That was a state grant. State grant, okay. Um, so we had to rush through that process mm -hmm. for us to vet it, the committee, for it to go to town council and finance. Mm -hmm. um, we might not have been able to do that in the town meeting format because of the calendar, but we were able to be flexible enough to do that this And year. when you say to go to town meeting or finance committee, are, uh, do you have the final say at the CPA as to what will be funded, or are you making recommendations to another body? We make recommendations um, that are vetted by finance committee and then are f approved or not approved by town council. That's okay. where it ends at, at town council. Very good. And uh, you touched on the fact that you do hold uh, public meetings so that people could come in and talk about right. the grants that they're proposing, but also community can react. Right. We want to hear from the community. That's very important in, in our town charter. Civic engagement and transparency are two of the pillars upon which this right. new charter is built. And so it's, it's good to hear how your committee participates in that way. Right, and we're very interested in transparency as well. And I will say that one of the things that we keep in mind in reviewing proposals is, do these, propo do these proposals serve a sort of wide swath of the population? Mm -hmm. um, now, some by their very nature are gonna be somewhat more limited, um, but it, it's nice to get a sense that many different stakeholders in town will mm -hmm. benefit from a particular mm -hmm. proposal. And, and if not uh, each proposal, some of the proposals, and if not this year, then maybe proposals next year, because this is an ongoing program. It's not a one-time event. Correct. So let's explain to the viewers where the money comes from. You said there's about 800,000 to a million a year in a typical year. Right. So that means there's some variation. What, where does the money come from and why is it, does it vary from 800 to a million? Right. So. Um, when the CPA was started, I think in 2000, um, the state allowed towns to um, have a 1.1.5% levy on property tax valuations after the first $100,000. Or I think towns had the option of whether they wanted to utilize that, mm -hmm. taking the first 100000 off the map, and, and Amherst did. Um, and a number of years later, uh, the state gave the uh, towns the option of upping that to 3%, which Amherst did. By vote. By vote. And yes. so the first decision was by vote of the town. Right. And was that a referendum or a town meeting? Uh, I believe that was a referendum. Referendum, so that the people were basically voting to tax themselves. Right. And it was a close purpose. vote from what I understand. Okay. Right. And the first time around it was 1.5%. Correct. A number of years later, the town voted to up it to 3% when allowed to do so. Which was another close vote. Okay. Right. Um, but the, we, have, we voted to tax ourselves. Right and to invest our own money in our own community for projects of value to the community as a whole. Correct. And, a, and at the beginning of the CPA history, there was a, a, a trust fund for CPA that came from um, document fees in the Registry of Deeds. Mm -hmm. that was that, all that money was put into the state trust fund, which was then used to match, often dollar for dollar, monies that were raised from the tax levies from the individual towns. As more and more towns started creating their own CPAs, that dollar for dollar match became unsustainable because the fees from the Registry of Deeds were not meeting that. So there was a number of attempts by the legislature to find new funding to, if not create a dollar dollar for match, make it a, a, a good closer to beefy match dollar. for yeah. towns. So we get money from the match and from our own funds. Great. And uh, are all communities eligible for the money, or are all communities eligible for the program, but only certain communities can actually get the money? Um, well, I think th there's sort of three rounds of, um, uh, I'm not sure if this is exactly what you're asking, but the, 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 the first round of match um, goes to 80% uh, of the monies that, that, that the Commonwealth has is distributed um, to all the towns that have at least a one and a half percent 
tips are taxed. So if the town doesn't tax themselves, they're not going to get any of Correct. that money. Correct. Right. The towns have to so make you, that. You they vote, have to pitch you in vote on to this. put yourself into the program, right. and when you do, you're eligible for the match. Right. And if you voted to go to the three percent, you get further consideration in in round two of okay. the disbursement of the Commonwealth funds. Um, and, so uh, and the more you tax yourself, the more the state's going to give you. Correct. And in that second round, uh, there is some, uh, I think, preference for um, towns with lower valuations. Mm -hmm. um, so, which means that they would have less money correct. available to spend, and so they need a little bit more money from the state correct. in order to get meaningful projects done. That's right. And so, if you're spending 800000 to a $1 million, that's including both the state and the, That's the total local amount. Right. Uh, number. And so at this point, it's three or four hundred thousand, maybe five from the town, and three, four, five hundred thousand from the state. I think the match in the last couple of years has been, I, I don't have these figures right off the top of my head, but has been around 13 to 17 percent. Okay, roughly. so that was... That's a little less. That was less. Yes. And that was during the, uh, the low period, but it's climbing back up again? It's climbing back up, yes. The okay. state's been very supportive in yeah. terms of Okay. Beefing up so at the very movies. beginning, as you said, there were few communities, so the Bigger communities match. that were in got big matches. Right. More communities, same size pool, the amount that you can give a community goes down. Right. So now they've changed it again by adding more state money, so it's starting to climb back up. Exactly. But it's more our money than their money. At this point, yes. At this point, and it's been that way for a while. Right. Okay, but we're getting the benefit of the money that we're paying in our property tax bill uh, here. And at the st on the state level, their money is actually coming from the sale of property. Right. And, and ours is coming from the ongoing taxation of our homes and businesses, et cetera. Right. So investing. So can you give us some uh, examples of some recent grants that you funded and, and uh, you know, sort of maybe you've got one in each category or maybe something pops out that was an unusual grant you did in this year or last year that right. you know really highlights something that was really special that could get done that would otherwise not have gotten done. Right. Well, I think one particularly interesting one in open space that um, <clears throat> we had last year was the purchase of the Hickory Ridge Golf Course. Um, it was a, there were a number of different funding sources, but the request for CPA was for two hundred thousand, and because it's CPA dollars, that money can only go toward land that's going to be protected. Mm -hmm. um, the Hickory Ridge Golf Course is a kind of an amazing resource. It's a beautiful piece of property. Um, it's been maintained with trails and bridges. Uh, the Fort River flows right through the middle of it. The Fort River, I think, is the largest undammed tributary into the Connecticut. So mm. this is a significant waterway. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, the views of the Holyoke Range are quite spectacular. It also sits between two of some of the most densely populated parts of town. Um, the apartments off East Hadley Road and the um, sort of 60s era um, community just below, just mm. south of, of Hickory Ridge. Um, so there's a huge population base to be able to take advantage of this what will be a park, in essence. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a complicated arrangement. There's multiple funding. There's parts of the property that will not be have a conservation restriction that will be purchased, like where the clubhouse is. That could be used for future affordable housing projects. Um, so there's some really intriguing possibilities with this land. But, um, you know, in terms of uh, sort of a park with handicapped access, you've got all these paved trails and bridges, which will need a little bit of work, but mm -hmm. um, the course will be able to grow up into a more natural state. Um, but I think it's going to be a pretty impressive project mm -hmm. um, that will right. serve important parts of the community. Other examples of interesting projects? Well, I think one of the really interesting affordable housing projects is one that uh, came up last year, which is the proposal by Valley CDC to construct by the Amherst College football stadium 28 um, single room occupancy um, uh, housing facilities within a sort of a dorm-like structure. Mm -hmm. And they've done this in Northampton quite successfully. That will serve um, a, a particularly vulnerable population, uh, single people, handicapped veterans, people recovering from working their way out of homelessness, uh, people who are recovering from addiction issues. 
a handful of people under the supervision of state mental health services. These are people that sometimes get, get lost in the affordable housing conversation because they're not low-income families necessarily. Um, they're individual people struggling with just finding a place to be, mm -hmm. struggling with loneliness, struggling with uh, physical handicap, with um, a number of different issues. And their housing needs are fairly simple, but they're very hard to find yes. in any community. And I think this is a really targeted project um, that's going to serve a very large number of people. It's controversial in town. Yeah. How much uh, did you guys put in? I think we put in... Tens of thousands or yeah, hundreds? Yeah, 500,000, 500, which will bond over 10 years. We can oh, bond okay. projects. So you can bond projects yes. and use proceeds from these taxes, Correct. these tax revenues, to pay over time. Right. Okay. So that allows you to multiply your uh, effort and take on bigger projects. Right. And those bonding costs come out of each year's distribution, so yeah. we, we want to be conservative about right. it. Um, sure. But, yeah, so it, but it gives us an opportunity to fund some really what I would say community altering projects mm -hmm. like the Valley CDC project. What percentage do you think overall um, of the projects that you fund are generated through and or by the government, meaning town government, or uh, versus through uh, community based organizations that are not part of the government? Right. Well, certainly in affordable housing, it's mostly community based organizations. Okay. Um, open space, mostly the town. Mm -hmm. um, I think recreation is a mix, yeah. um, and probably historical preservation is a mix, a mix as, well. as well. Very good. If you look over 10 years, or, or probably since the entire history of the CPA in Amherst, we've spent um, much more money on affordable housing than, say, recreation, mm -hmm. probably close to twice as much. Historical preservation and open space somewhere floating in the middle. Mm -hmm. So this uh, program, as I recall, was started, oh, 20 between 20 and 25 years ago. Right. And Amherst was one of the first communities that That's what I understand. joined. And therefore, it's a pretty mature, if you will, organizational enterprise here in town. Um, that said, so it's, it's well used, well known, well respected. Doesn't mean there might not be some things that you'd like to see improved as a member of that committee or chair of that committee. In the final few minutes that we have, do you have some things that are on your mind that you think need to be changed in terms of how the program is run or the kinds of things that are being invested in or in any directions right. you'd like to yeah, I think, highlight? Yeah, um, you know, I think one of the, uh, it, this is probably particular to Amherst, I think one of the frustrations is that to fund any kind of maintenance on open space land preservation projects, those projects have to have originated from a CPA proposal. So land that had been protected prior to CPA, we cannot fund uh, any kind of Anything improvements. Anything for improvements, okay. And I spent a lot of time on Amherst Trails, so I know the quality of the bridges and um, the trails themselves. And there's some, there's some rough edges to our public land infrastructure, and it would be nice to be able to support some of those improvements. Okay. Um, I think procedurally within the committee, I think we'd like to be a little bit better at monitoring the progress um, of proposals. Sometimes we sort of find out three years out that money really hasn't been getting spent the way it should have. Mm -hmm. Not that they're spending it on things they, they weren't telling us about. It's more projects getting bogged down in bureaucracy or inertia. So we, we would like to be a little more on top of that. And we're actually in active discussions right now as a committee to come up with a better reporting system okay. for that. Great. And so if somebody is listening to this show and says, I have a great idea, what do they do first? Um, well, I think there's on the town website under CPA, there is a document called the plan, which we are revising. It, uh, for final touches, hopefully, will be done tonight at our, at our meeting. Um, that really outlines how CPA works, how a project would be considered, whether it it fits into the definition of a legitimate proposal, that's a really good first step. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody can certainly contact me. Um, I believe I'm, my uh, contact information is on the it's website. On the site. And we can. And how about town staff? Is there a staff person who works with uh, the CPA? Uh, Anthony Delaney uh, works very closely with us. He's given us extraordinary support. Terrific. Um, if, 
everybody else in town hall works as hard as he does. We're in really good shape. And do you so. list on the site all of your uh, pending uh, grant applications yes. so people can review them and see what's in them, then decide if they want to weigh in on those? Absolutely. And do you have an, uh, an archive going back a number of years so people can see the types of program projects and programs you've funded? Both those things are true and they're Great. right on the website. Great. And if somebody needs technical assistance, never wrote a grant proposal before, blah, 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 they could give you a call and you Absolutely. might give them some guidance. Sure. They could call Anthony at Town Hall right. and he could provide some guidance. So, right. uh, so people shouldn't be uh, shy about getting started because once you get started, the ball can roll. Not at all. And the application itself is fairly simple and straightforward, but um, right. people can always reach out to us if they're filling out the form and, and have a question. Great. Well, thank you for your good work on the committee and it's thank the pleasure. committee members uh, as well uh, for laboring in the vineyards here to help us preserve uh, and things that are important in our community. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we hope you'll uh, join us again on another show. Thank you, and thanks again. Thank you, Stan. Thank you.